He mentions some consider worldly prosperity as seen as a sign of Allah's pleasure, while misfortune and loss are seen as evidence of Allah's anger. Is it always true? If yes, then why do many non-Muslims lead a prosperous life while many Muslims lead a life of poverty and misery in this world? It is not a thumb rule that if you are prosperous, Allah is pleased with you and if you are poor or if you have misery, then Allah is not pleased with you. This is not a thumb rule. Normal rule is that whenever there is calamity, whether it be poverty, whether it be misery, it is either a test for you or it's a punishment from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Whenever there is prosperity, any good thing that happens, it's either a test for you or it's a reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I'll give you an example. That Allah says in the Quran, in Surah Anfal, that your children and your wealth are a test for you. You know, they're good thing, the children and wealth is a good thing, but it's a test for you. On the other hand, it says in Surah Nisa, chapter 4, verse 124, that whoever does deeds of righteousness, be it a male or a female, and is a believer, we will put him in paradise, and not the least injustice will be done to them. A similar message is repeated in Surah Nahal, chapter number 16, verse number 97, that anyone that does deeds of righteousness, be it a man or a woman, and has faith, he'll be rewarded for all the good he has done. So here it shows that anything good that happens, the wealth, children, it's either a test for you or it is a reward. And the reward is talking about Jannah. When any calamity befalls you, as Allah says in the Quran, in Surah Baqarah, chapter number 2, verse number 155, be sure we will test you with something of fear and hunger, with loss in goods, in lives, or fruits of your toils and give glad tidings to those who patiently persevere. Here the test is talking about loss in wealth, loss in life. It's a calamity. Allah is testing you. And those who patiently persevere, they'll be successful in this test. On the other hand, calamity is also punishment, as Allah says in Surah Hud, chapter number 11, verse number 82, talking about the common loot, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala makes the two cities upside down, Sodom and Gomorrah. And he showers brimstones, hard baked clay, layer upon layer. So this is a punishment. Allah says in Surah Baqarah, chapter number 2, verse number 216, that you may dislike a thing which may be good for you, and you may like a thing which may be bad for you. Allah knows, and you don't know. It's further mentioned in Surah Namal, chapter number 27, verse number 40. This is by the grace of thy Lord. And my Lord is testing me whether I'm grateful or ungrateful. This was mentioned by Suleiman alayhi salam when the angel gets the throne in a wink. So he says, this is by the mercy of thy Lord. And he further says, the Lord is testing me whether I'm grateful or ungrateful. And those who are grateful, they will get the reward. And those who are ungrateful, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala does not require them. It's mentioned in the Quran in Surah Nisa, chapter number 4, verse number 79. All the good that happens, it's from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And all that evil, it takes place, it is because of your own self. That means all the good is from Allah, and all the evil is from our own selves. It's mentioned in Surah Mulk, chapter number 16, verse number 2. Allazi khalaq al mawta wal hayata. It's Allah who has created death and life to test which of you is good in deeds. Allah says in Surah Ambiya, chapter number 21, verse number 35. Every soul shall have a taste of death. And be sure we will test you with something that is evil and something which is good by way of trial. And to us is our return. So we come to know that whenever there is a calamity, it's either a test or a punishment. Whenever something good that happens is either a test or it's a reward from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala.